going to show you some samples that I've made of an envelope journal and then we'll run through the steps of how to make it. So this is one version. This version I actually covered with fabric that has a sticky backing like jack paper so it's really easy to apply. And this one, uh, the inside pages are made with Graphic 45 um, the calendar months and so each month has two envelopes and I thought this would be good to keep um, birth dates that you want to remember um, you can use it as a journal when you go away um, or just even you could probably do monthly photos and keep a track of uh, the date of when you took them so that's that one that's just an easy it's a sewn on button and there's a the closure then we've got this one the closure is actually a metal um, swing handle the papers that I've used for this um, a graphic 45 once again the Asian um, theme one and it's put together exactly the same way your envelopes and one of the papers had uh, pictures of all these ladies on the back so each of those I've cut out and just put um, an envelope a little envelope on the back so hidden journaling um, little photos whatever you want to do in there okay so to make one um, you can use any envelopes that you have around um, these are little square ones I could make a really small one out of that I've also got those ones I mean you can even do even smaller ones if you really wanted to it doesn't really matter the number of envelopes that you use it's up to you what um, uh, how many you put into the journal okay so these are roughly about the same size which is important um, it just makes it easier when you're making the journal so what we need to do first is measure up and make the cover okay so we're cutting out our um, cardboard which is probably about just over 300 gsm it's about twice the thickness of cereal boxes okay so what I've done is this particular envelope that I'm using is nine centimeters by sixteen and a half so if I put it down there I want it to be a little bit longer because also if I want to use these envelopes in there that's that um, length <coughs> so then I've got my space there with my first envelope and this is where the second one will sit and I've put about two centimeters from there to their space and same here in the middle here because this will be the base here of my book where it sits that's about three centimeters you will want to make it um, the measurements depending on how many envelopes you want to put in and also then it does become thicker once you start putting things into it obviously okay so this is our envelope three centimeter bottom envelope then we've got another three centimeters here which will be across here that bit, that bit there and then I've made mine a little bit longer here because I actually want the next one to fold over further so that's four centimeters so now once it's all measured we need to fold along those lines so that once we cover them in paper it'll make it a lot easier so what I do is just put my ruler there fold it over put my ruler there again and fold it over we'll go over to here Okay, once you've done that, just fold them back over the other way and either use 
a brayer or a back of a spoon or something just to give it a good fold because that cardboard is quite thick. So the base is all made and folded and ready. We're going to start to attach our papers. Now what I've chosen for this one is a range of Kayser Craft and as you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, there's two of those, seven, so that I can mix and match and I don't have to worry about getting it all perfect and coordinated. So as you can see my paper is not long enough so what we're going to do is I want to cover one side with one pattern only so what you're going to do is just go along and put your tape down don't put it on the cut lines okay so I've applied tape to sections of both sides you can use just tape or you can use just glue I like to use um, both um, I just find the tape holds it in place while the glue is drying. Okay, before I peel off the backing off my tape and apply the glue, I want to measure up my paper. So, I want to use this side um, of the paper. So just measure it up. Now we have our two sheets and as you can see we only need part of the next one. So what we need to do now is peel off the top of the tape. I peeled the back of the tape so now I'm just going to add a little bit of glue just mainly on the edges for me and along the fold lines. Okay, I say so, we just line it up. If you have any excess hanging over, you can always go back and trim it. And I'll just run over it with a brayer to make sure that it's flat. And then what I will do is add just a little bit of tape to this section here. Tiny bit of glue. And then just wipe the excess glue off. Brayer it again. Okay, so then if we go over here, what we need to do is trim that excess. And that's one side done. Okay, so now what we're going to do is check which way your pattern is going, especially if there's writing. Now what I want to do is cover this side. But what I will do, as you can see, I won't have enough to do all of it. So what I will do, I think, is up to one fold, which will be the base of my book, I'll cover with this. So what I need to do is just get the line where I need to cut. Okay, so I've cut up to my first... Uh, bottom fold here. So take off the tape. Apply your paper. So that's up to there. Okay. 
So just let it dry for a minute before we fold it where the pattern paper is. So now for the rest of it. So once that's dried, um, you can leave it to dry a little while longer if you want to. Then all you need to do is go back and find where your fold lines are and just give them a good press. So then you've got, there's your album. That's what the finished sizing will be. Now what you need to do is make sure that all the envelope openings are facing the same way. And I've got 16 in total here. So, what I'm going to do is, I suppose there are a couple of ways that you can put them into your journal. The other, the two that I've showed you um, are put in with a binder and I'll show you how to do that. So I've got my cinch binder here, which I find really simple to use, and I've got my coils here. So these are 5 eighths um, in measurement. On the top here, there's, as you can see, different measurements and you take the one that you need um, accordingly. Okay, so what I need to do is line up my envelopes in the middle of each other. Okay, so what I want to do then is have my coils I don't want them right to the end, I just want them sort of about a centimetre each side, I suppose. So then all I need to do is cut it. So that will be my coils. You put whatever it is that you want to make a hole uh, in underneath these little buttons here. So basically that takes up the whole of all the holes all the, uh, the area that I'm going to punch with. So what I need to do is you press in where you want the holes. So as I said, because I want them all the way along, I've pushed them all in. So make sure they're all together. Push it right to the back as, as long as um, it keeps going, stop. And then you just simply press it down. Voila. Okay, so I'm just going to take my coil and put it on this little um, easy to use threader, I suppose, and I'm just going to put my envelopes on in the order that I want them. So as you can see, all the flaps at the moment are going this way. And then what I want are all the flaps to be going that way because that's the middle of the book. As you can see, pretty easy to do. So once that's done, take it off carefully without pulling these apart. Okay, so what I want to do is close that up. So because it's still 5 eighths, that's what my ring binder is. What you need to do is put, put it straight so that the gap is to the back of the machine, right to the back, and then just press down, voila, all bind it up. And this is what it'll look like as we go along. Okay, now for those who don't have um, one of those binders, a cinch binder, the other option is to do this, and I have done this before as well. So I've taken my envelopes that I'm going to use, put tape on the edges, a bit of glue as well if you want, so then leave a gap, probably a good inch and put your decorative paper on, okay? So then what you're going to do is trim it. 
put a bit of glue with that tape as well if you like. So then once you've done that, if you go and find the middle, okay, such as uh, what I've just done there, once you've done that, instead of the coiled journal inside, what I will do is I can do two or three layers of this, put them together and just bound the whole thing with a nice decorative piece of string. So what you would do is then and there you've got like that. So you could have two or three layers together under the ribbon and then just do another one and another one and keep adding like that. You can do just the one layer as I've done there until you've got what you want. Just to show you what the ribbon binding is all about, um, this is just one of the journals that I had made um, on our travels. These are actually five double pages and that's the middle where the ribbon ties it in. Okay, as you can see through there. And then obviously you've got another layer of five or double ten pages and so forth. There's another um, ribbon holding it all together. Okay, I mean with this one I've actually done the ribbon tying and then covered it. Um, but with this one, I don't mind the decorative ribbon being on the outside. Okay, so to attach the inside bit to my cover, what I do is just take one side. It doesn't really matter which of my envelopes. And I'm going to put some tape. Take that one envelope. Now don't forget where the middle or the bottom part of your book is and don't glue on there and just stick that envelope down okay and that will then hold the rest in to decorate usually when you buy a set of papers there's one of these ones that have the um, um, 12 different little pictures on there so I make use of those so now we're going to make our journaling tags to go into the envelopes you can make as many as you like so I'll take one of the little pictures that I've cut out and to be able to obviously write stick a blank bit of paper on the background, take some of our ribbon, whichever you want, make a bit there as long as you want, and that's not going to come out, but you can either tie it, or you can simply staple it. there's our tag. So you can put more than one into an envelope and I just find it easier. If you're not going to put tags in it, it doesn't really matter so much, but if you're going to put tags in, just fold the envelope top down. The other way to do tags, uh, journaling tags for your journal is take some ready-made tags and you're going to be able to write on those directly so we then just take some ribbon once again can do it this way as well pull it through gently there's another tag that goes into there so you're just going to keep making those until you have enough. Now we just want to decorate uh, the envelopes a little bit. As I said most of the papers come with some sort of decorative accent or ribbons 
or extra papers or cutouts, use those. just makes life a little easier. So what I'm going to do is just fold that in half, a strip that I've already cut out. And that makes it easy just to stick on there, for example. Okay, so then the next one I might do that one there with the writing. I'll take off that excess bit. Instead of just leaving it like that, I might just take one of my edge punches here. Okay, so as you can see, I put a lacy edge on it, a little bit of glue, and that goes that way, so I'll do it there. And just another little one. You might have some interesting bits and pieces lying around in your room, just use those. Little bits of fabric, little bits of lace, just depending on the theme. Uh, the paper that you're using, the look that you want to go for. Okay. You can do stamping. Go through the white one here. And I'll just do a very quick stamp. Okay. So... Once you've done the inside, and you can just keep going and going and going, we want to decorate the outside. Okay, so because this is quite vintagey looking, this paper, I thought that I might actually take some of this, like a metal, very light metal sheet um, that is sticky on the back. What I'll do is... I'll just, I don't want to cut the whole, I don't want to cover, sorry, the whole of the front. What I want to do is grab an embossing folder. Okay, so there's my embossed metal. I'm just going to quickly and easily just put some alcohol ink on it just to give it a bit of colour. Grab a brush very quickly and okay, and then take a second to dry it. Okay, so that's all dry the alcohol ink, peel the back off. If you really want to, just put a little bit more glue just to be double sure and stick it on there. So now that's on there. And one of the last things you want to be doing is put some sort of a clasp on there. So you can do something like that. Or I might actually use this one. Just put in the last thread through. There we are. So just finishing off the closing of the journal, I'm just attaching some ribbon. So then, when it's all done, and you, whichever way you want to close it, and there's your journal. Obviously, there's a bit more decorating that I can do with this one. This one, for example, I've added some lace here. And also I've sewn in um, a metal uh, quote. And on the front here, I've decorated with the days, um, the, uh, the month, sorry, that coincide with the, correspond with the inside and just written something by hand. There's lots of different things, as I said, that you can do. Okay, this one here just some little um, coordinating accents that went with the papers. Same on the inside, lots of ribbon, lots of little um, stuck on bits. As I said, you can go through and stick on 
lots of little hidey things in there. And that's it. I hope that you have fun making these. As you can see, they are quite simple once you get the pattern down. And have fun. And if you go to my blog, you'll be able to see lots um, of different things that I've made. Thanks.